Well, now, you know, some of you are probably old enough to remember President Reagan. You know, Reagan and the Taliban, that's at the time when the United States was helping. They created them. And we do have a picture of Reagan sitting with the uh, Taliban uh, at the White House when he was president. So, this is what the, uh, the Taliban and the Muslims and this Al-Qaeda is all about. It's all an American creation controlled, financed, to be used for different things. You know, they already put the investments in these people when they were in Afghanistan fighting the Russians. And then they used them in Libya. They used them in Syria. They are using them in Syria. They're just in Yemen. It's the same groups. It's the same people. They made the Muslim image look like those screaming, long-bearded Muslims. When Islam has nothing to do with these people. Islam is not what you are seeing. You want to see how Afghanistan looked like in the 60s? See, this is the image of a Muslim. But look how Afghanistan looked like in the 60s. These girls are in Afghanistan. This is on the street of Kabul. These are Afghani women. Now what happened to Afghanistan now? These are the Afghani women now. Right here. Is this Islam? No, it's not. This is not Islam. This is not Islam. You know, the image of a Muslim in your head is that screaming Muslim. People like that. Have you thought that, hey, Muslims don't look like that? And they don't, by the way. Have you, like, a Muslim doctor? Isn't this an image of a Muslim? That's how most Muslims look like. Just normal people, professionals, astronauts, engineers, doctors. All these are Muslims. But that's not the image in your head. The image of a Muslim in your head is the one that wants to kill Christian. Just like what this charade in Kenya was all about. Now remember when General Wesley Clark, remember when he said that after 9-11 he went to visit some of his buddies in the... Uh, uh, at the Pentagon, and one of his generals told him, he said, we are going to take over seven countries, seven countries in five years. Well, it's taken much longer than five years, but they are taking over these countries. He said, starting with Iraq, okay? He said, starting with Iraq, then we're gonna go to Libya, we're gonna go to Syria, we're gonna go to Lebanon, and we are going to finish it off, or we are going to finish off Iran after that. Now, isn't that what happened? 
Now, now when, when Wesley, Wesley Clark said it, everybody thought, now nah, what is he doing? But, but that's, that's the truth. And, and that's, that's, by the way, what we have been saying from the beginning, that it's not going to stop at Iraq, because Israel wants all these countries destroyed. We're not doing this for the United States. We're doing this for Israel from beginning to end. Now, this Al-Nusra group, it's a terrorist group. It's people, the United States was fighting in Afghanistan, called them Al-Qaeda, and then they used them and they were supporting them. The United States was supporting these people in Libya to destroy Gaddafi. Now, what's going on in Libya now? Remember we were when uh, uh, Anderson Cooper was almost crying on the air about Libya and about Egypt? What's going on in Libya now? War, death, destruction. What was going on before when Gaddafi was there? Stability. And many, at least people were going to school. They were not fighting in the streets as it is now. What about in Egypt? What about in Yemen? What's going on in Yemen? What about the Middle East, this democracy, exporting democracy? Well, we told you it's the biggest lie. Before they even went there, we told you they want to destroy. You cannot, democracy, it's not something that you pick up and say, here, democratize. Democracy, it's a system. It's a culture of democracy. You have to grow up. You have to have democracy not being exported. It's got to come from within you. It wasn't easy for the United States to actually establish this system. I mean, it's not a fabulous system, but it's better than others. You know, it's a system that can be bought with money. You can purchase power in the United States. Well, that's not a good system. But guess what? It's probably one of the best in the world. The system. But is it really working that good? It's not. But other systems in the world, they're not working at all. Our system is being bought and paid for by money. People who have money, people who control money, control the media, control politicians. Now, so what happened? Let's get back into Syria, and I'm sure you are consciously waiting to hear exactly what happened in Syria, and why did we stop it? Why did we stop the war? Well, I appreciate your patience, but this is what happened. Russia tried to stop the war, to stop the United States from bombing Syria and if you've been following this Kerry John Kerry our Secretary of State was on his high horse talking about war and bombing and even they reminded him that, hey, look, you know, you were against the war when you were young, not because you are in power, you are for the war, and he was going after it. 
No one was convincing John Kerry that the war will not go. No one's going to convince him it was a go. It was a go with Obama. Until the truth about the chemical weapons, without a doubt, and the Russians had proved this, and for those of you observers and followers, you remember Netanyahu flew to Moscow. And there was a lot of diplomatic activities going on around the world. Because Syria was going to be destroyed within hours. That night, the Russians said, if you bomb, we're going to prove to the world that it was the opposition in Syria that had used chemical weapons. It was not the regime that had used chemical weapons. And they proved to them, they proved to them that that was the fact. It was the opposition that actually used chemical weapons. It was not the the regime as the United States was claiming and still claiming by the way but that's okay claiming is one thing and destroying a country is another thing so why did England had to rush why did David Cameron had to rush to his parliament because they wanted a way out of bombing they could not bomb because they had no moral leg to stand on if they bombed because they were bombing they were bombing because the regime used chemical weapons well russia said if you fire a bullet we're going to prove to the world that it was not the regime that you are bombing what are you going to do then the only other alternative was to clean up the image of the United States and to restore that big mistake. They did not want to make the same mistake they made in Iraq when they bombed Iraq for weapons of mass destruction that they did not have. Well, is this going to be again where the United States is bombing a country, killing its president, destroying the country, destroying the infrastructure, destroying the defenses of that country that is only a few feet from the biggest enemy there, Israel, for using chemical weapons when they in fact did not use them. And Russia was going to show and prove, prove to the world that the regime did not do it. What was America going to do? Turn the gun on the opposition there on the Free Syrian Army that they are supporting, that they sent in there, they equipped, or on al-Nasra? Of course not. Because that's going to basically screw up everything about Syria. Now you know the United States is not going to go and bomb the opposition because that's going to help the regime that the United States tried to unseat so how did this thing happen? How could a big mistake like this happen? And why did the opposition use chemical weapons? Now, do they have the capability? Yeah, they do have the capability. Because the head of this, as we told you in, in last program, the head of the Syrian chemical weapons division had exited the regime and went to the other side. So the head of the regime, the regime's chemical weapons, now belongs to the Free Syrian Army with a bunch of his people around him. So they knew how to make it. We have videos showing that they definitely know how to make it because 
they showed it. I mean, the stupidity is taking a picture of this video and putting it on YouTube.